level up a few thousand degrees with a Lava Hot Podcast and host Joseph Connell Jr. You'll hear from ordinary people who are doing extraordinary things. From tech startup CEOs and marketing professionals to authors, investors, and sales trainers, this show will be packed with information to help you level up in life or business, taking you from on fire up to lava hot. Get ready to burn this mother down. Hello and welcome to the Lava Hot Podcast. I'm your host, Joseph Connell. Today, I have an incredible individual joining me today. Um, just give you some quick bullet points about uh, Miss Ginger King. Uh, she's a cosmetic chemist, beauty entrepreneur, and business speaker. Uh, really excited to have her on. This month, I've really been trying to interview um, really basically females. Individuals that are doing really big things in cultivating a business or building a business. Uh, I asked my support staff to try to find somebody, find individuals all month long that are in that wheelhouse. I'm really looking at women that are in leadership roles and developing those skills. And we came across Ginger and I'm just going to read real quick uh, her bio just because I think it's very impressive. Uh, Ginger is founder and CEO of Grace Kingdom Beauty. That's at Grace Beauty. Dot com, a uh, cosmetic product development firm out of New Jersey specializing in helping to create your beauty brand from concept to launch. <clears throat> she has been a keynote speaker for brand launches and, uh, and has spoken at various trade conferences on product development and in cosmetic product innovation. Ginger is an often quoted beauty expert and has been featured on radio, video chat, uh, TV, including a contributor on Good Day Sacramento. <clears throat> Excuse me. I also meant to mention that she was also featured in magazines. She's been quoted in over 35 beauty magazines, including Allure, Self, uh, Teen Vogue, Women's Health. Uh, Ginger served as Allure's beauty judge for Breakthrough Product in 2017, Yahoo's Diversity and Beauty Award in 2018, Beauty Packaging Award judge in 2019, and Beauty Magazine's Brain Trust in 2020. Ginger's latest venture, Fan Love Beauty, is a clean vegan beauty brand inspired by her mentor, Shark Tank's very own Damon John. Ginger, welcome to the show. Thank you for your invitation. Yes, yes, absolutely. Woo, that, I, I love that bio. Got me a little bit winded just going through it, but it's a, it's a good winded because I'm very impressed with everything that you've accomplished throughout your career, which that's what I want to start with. I want to understand like, you know, what got you into the beauty industry? Because, you know, when I, me not knowing much about the beauty industry, I know that that has to be a very competitive market to be in. And, you know, if you think of your typical business owner, they have their own Goliath that they have to go up against, whether it's, you know, an HVAC company going up against a big guy or, you know, uh, a clothing brand trying to start like Damon John did, where he's going up against brands like Nike. In the cosmetic space, I would imagine that you have a lot of big national type of competitors that you have to go up against, and you have this amazing bio of, you know, basically credentials. So I would imagine you've been able to, you know, really embrace being, you know, in a way, maybe the underdog and have cultivated an entire career out of it. So I want to start with that. How did you get started in the industry? And then we can carry through, through from there. Sure. I know a lot of people when they say they're in beauty, they stumble into beauty, but I was actually determined to be in beauty at a very young age. When I was growing up, my mom was the first woman from Shiseido Boutique, the cosmetic brand from Japan to Taiwan. So under that influence, I actually start loving beauty without knowing it. So I always said the beauty is in my blood. And when I came to America, I started experiencing makeup because I wasn't allowed to wear makeup when I was in Taiwan. And I was just so wowed by the magic the makeup can give people. Mm -hmm. It's just a total different, you know, you feel more confident when you have makeup on. And I was like, okay, I want to become a, uh, I want to become a makeup artist because makeup is like a magician. However, because I'm Asian, it's expected that if I don't get a PhD, at least get a master's degree. So when the cosmetology school called, they actually told her there's no such person, Ginger, you got the wrong number. <laughs> 
So I was like, fine. If I cannot become a makeup artist, why don't I major in chemistry? It's a science degree. It's considered very noble in Asian society. Right. And become a cosmetic chemist. Wow. So it's been almost 30 years. Wow. So that's very impressive. So you had this um th this goal of wanting to be in the cosmetic field as as an artist and then you decide that you're going to go this whole other route and become you know on the chemist side which I would imagine is much harder to <laughs> to do. I would imagine there's schooling that you can go through to become a cosmetic artist and things like that but I would imagine the chemist side is a heck of a lot harder. It is harder, but actually it's more fun because instead of using products developed by other people, I actually get to develop product that can impact other people's appearance. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, that's very cool. And then you have, you know, you get to control what's going into those products and things like that. So, um, and you've been 30 years um, as a cosmetic scientist. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Cosmetic chemist. Sorry. Yeah. And then... Um, and then what got you into the, the beauty entrepreneur role of things? Okay. So well, when I started, I was in corporate and then I actually have touched every single aspect of beauty because when I started in California, there wasn't really a cosmetic chemistry, like a cosmetic companies that I can work for. So mm -hmm. the first company I worked for is actually Dole Foods Company, which is the pineapple company. So what I was doing there was analyzing vitamin C's in fruits and juices that's the closest I can get but then I never stopped my passion for beauty so I actually moonlighted in the department store I worked for Estee Lauder as a beauty consultant practicing my makeup skills yeah. so I was actually uh solved the problem for the pineapple at the time as well because at the time there was this pink disease none of the chemists none of the scientists can figure out what's going on and at the time, as a lot of just launched the self tanner, I was like, maybe it's like a self tanning, like a phenomenon. And I bought the self tanner. I analyzed with HPLC, and that's exactly the same phenomenon. It's called the Miller's reaction. So I was using that passion to solve an issue. Now, so I have been into the retail side. So, uh, also later on, I came to New York, which mm -hmm. is like the major hub for cosmetic manufacturing. I also went into um, cosmetic raw material sales. So I actually have experience in every single point in the beauty industry. Thus, I started my own consulting company 10 years ago. So what I've been doing is helping other people to build their own beauty brand from concept to launch, including formulation. And um, about two years ago, I also launched my own brand, Fan Love Beauty, so I can walk the talk to show people what they can do after they launch the brand with me. Very cool. So so what you do now is if an individual um, has an idea for a product, you are able to help them maybe take it from, from start to actually launching that product out. Yes. And do you mind sh sharing like what that process is the like? Process. Okay. Uh, usually when people come to me, I will go through a consulting call with them to find out, you know, what they are about. Why do they want to develop a product line? Because this is a very, very competitive space. When you develop something, you better have a purpose behind it. You mm -hmm. better know your why, because if you don't know your why, you know, if you're losing money in the first three years, you probably won't want to keep going so mm -hmm. it's all very important so, and then I help you to put together a mini business blueprint so what it entails is I actually help you to define your mission your vision and also uh, what kind of product you should be making what kind of packaging the price point the distribution and most importantly your unique selling proposition what are the ingredients that is so uniquely to you? So you mm -hmm. all, people will only come to you. Otherwise, they can just buy any creams and lotions. Why would people want to come to you? So that's, I call it the branding, which is the funda fundamentals in beauty business. And then I'll go through prototyping, we'll make them products, and they can even buy out the formula from me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, I want to kind of touch on a little bit of where you've, been featured in over 35 different magazines 
uh, quite typically, like what what type of um, what type of information do you tend to share throughout those magazines? A lot of them is ingredient based because a lot of people, uh, general consumers know dermatologists may know skin, but dermatologists they don't know ingredients. If you ask, you know, dermatologists what ingredient to use, they only probably only give you the top five: the glycolic acid, the vitamin C, you know, the sunscreens. But there are like over thousands and thousands of innovation in cosmetic ingredients. And ingredient suppliers only talk to cosmetic chemists for liability reasons because we are the ones that formulate with the product in the final product. So a lot of questions tend to be on ingredient based. Very cool. And that would be a good segue into Fan Love Beauty because I'm kind of curious, it being a natural and vegan based uh, product, I'm curious. Um, you know, what is like some of the stuff that you noticed with, you know, maybe traditional makeup versus a, a vegan based and why that part was so important? Okay. Uh, being a cosmetic chemist, I am not opposed to using synthetic materials because for quality control issues, synthetic materials are more stable. The okay. reason why I created Fan Love Beauty was actually out of my celebrity crush of Damon Zhang. <laughs> I saw him using a lip balm in front of me. I was like, Damon, if it's something that's so close to you, that's in your pocket, on your lips, it has to be mine. And if you look at the landscape of the lip balms on the market, I guarantee you, if you use any lip balm, you take it out, I guarantee you, you're going to find at least one of all of the three ingredients. One is petrol atom lanolin and beeswax those are not really desirable for various reasons petrol atom unless it's usp gray it can have impurities and which can be carcinogenic it's from petroleum oh wow and lanolin is for the wool grease long-term use you can get a uh, contact dermatitis you can have allergic reaction to it vomiting mm. And um, beeswax, people say, what's wrong with beeswax? It's natural. Correct, it's natural. But where do you get the beeswax from? You get it from the beehives where they sleep. How do you like your house to be disturbed for human vanity? Right. Thus, it's not considered vegan. The definition of vegan is it's not animal derived or no animal cruelty. It's mm -hmm. not tested on animals. So being vegan, you cannot have beeswax in the products. So, and I also started the lip balm is because lip balm is the only beauty product, no matter if you are men or women or even kids, everyone can use it. And it's the only product that can be ingested besides lipstick or lip gloss. Yeah. So it's very, very important to me to develop a very healthy lip balm for daily use, especially because Damon Jong is a speaker. The reason why he has to use lip balm all the time when you talk all day long, your lips can get really dry. And mm -hmm. just drinking water is only going to send you to the bathroom. No matter how experienced of a speaker you are, you can have stage fright. And once you have stage fright, you want to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so <laughs> right. it's just not good, you know, as a presenter. So having a nice lip balm that is full of superfoods like uh, avocado, flaxseed, mango, and also infused with essential oils of peppermint mm -hmm. and um, orange can help you to talk more confidently, no matter the stage you are on. Very cool. So for those that are interested in ordering that product, is that just right there on the website or do you Fan also Love have Beauty. it like Amazon, com. things like that? Uh, order from uh, fanlovebeauty.com fanlovebeauty.com. Perfect. perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing that I did want to ask about, because I personally feel that no matter, you know, what phase of the entrepreneurial journey you're on, that finding a mentor, whether it's a mentor that's, you know, right in your neighborhood, that might be a, an established businessman or a mentor that you just happen to really lock into that as an author. For me, it's Grant Cardone. For you, it sounds like it's Damon John. It, how important do you feel finding a mentor is in running a successful business? It's extremely important. I'm also a mentee of Green Cardone, and I think oh, that's cool. my major life. Yeah. yeah, you know what? And now that I think of that, my wife did mention that. Yeah, so I, I'm actually being mentored by both of them. And it's important to be mentored by people who have done it. And mm -hmm. both men are very successful. 
So, you know, you don't, when you just uh, asking for advice from people like friends and family, if they have never done it, it's just like opinions. Yeah. But when you ask from people who have proven success, that's how you learn. You model me, me master. Yep. So, and let's say Damon John, I'm kind of curious, you know, what are some of the things that you've learned by being a mentor from Damon John um, as an individual that has obviously, you know, done some amazing things over the last 20, 30 years? I'd be curious to know, like, what are some of like the bigger takeaways that you've learned directly from that mentor? Uh, power of broke. Yep. A lot of people think when you start the business, you need to have a lot of money. But uh, instead, it's like you really just bootstrap until you cannot because you never want to give out your share too early in the game. Yeah. And uh, that's why I have never asked for any investment because I don't want to get diluted and I don't want to waste my investors' money as tuition. I yeah. want to work to the point that I absolutely need help then I will go get an investor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, for me with Grant, being a marketing guy, it's hard to not pay attention to the marketing side of, of Grant, which um, I went to his marketing workshop. And at that workshop, they they said something that stuck with me. I always thought it, it was backwards for me. I always thought that sales was the most important thing for a business or an organization. And then I go there and, Grant Cardone, the godfather of sales, says marketing is senior to sales. And I was like, wait a minute, aren't you the sales guy? No, come to find out, he's just the marketing guy. He is a marketing genius. Sales just comes as a byproduct of getting known. Did I lose you? Do I got you back again? Uh yes, you kind of froze. Yep, you froze as well. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not sure if that was okay. my internet or what. That's okay. Uh, that, that's the beauty of a, a virtual podcast. Yesterday I had to scrap two whole episodes because the internet wasn't working. It's always a bummer. But um yeah, going back to it, I mean, you go down there and I had the godfather of sales saying that marketing is uh, is senior to sales. And now that I look at his entire career. The more he got known, the more his sales went up. So it definitely made sense. And the the one big thing that, that sticks with me still to this day, and I just love the saying, is that, um, you know, dang it, I, I just brain freezed right there. Um, one, if they don't know you, they can't flow you yeah. is, is a big one. And mm -hmm. best known will always beat the best. Mm -hmm. And I, the more I... The more I analyze that saying, the more I look around and I start to recognize that in, in major companies that do significant revenue, they're not always the best, but they are usually the best known. And it mm -hmm. just, it, it rings so true. Mm -hmm. But um, so I'll go to that on, on the Grant Cardone side as a mentee. I'm kind of curious what type of things you've learned from him as well. Commit, commit first and the rest will follow. Creativity follows commitment. Absolutely. Yep. I, I do love that statement. That was, um, you know, when I went to that marketing workshop, both Jared and Alan had said, you know, start a podcast. This was last November. And I was like, you know, what? yeah, I'm going to start a podcast. I started scheduling guests while I was there. I booked three months worth of uh, worth of interviews and we kicked it off in January. So I committed to it before I even knew like, the equipment, where I was going to shoot it at, where I was going to do it, how often I just said, okay, I'm, I'm going to commit to every Monday uh, from, you know, four o'clock to five o'clock or three o'clock to four o'clock that I'm going to do the show. And it's changed a little bit since then, but it was, you know, I'll figure out the rest later. We'll figure out how to get the, the camera gear and, you know, get it edited and all that jazz. And I committed to 104 episodes. We're behind schedule, but that's why I set a big goal to begin with. But right now I actually saw a stat for podcasts um, you know, the average podcast that starts never gets past episode three. Like the vast majority of them never get past episode three. Um, of the remaining like 20%, most of them never make it past episode 21. And ones that make it past episode 21 are D 
deemed to be in the top 1% of all podcasts. Right now we've shot, this is probably like episode 46 or 47. Congratulations. Yep. So, and it was, it was all that it was, you know, finding the mentor that gave me the idea that pushed me to, to commit said, you know, just commit, figure it out later, made that commitment. And, you know, here we are 46, seven episodes in. And, um, so I, I'm a, a big believer that finding a mentor is definitely something that's very valuable. So I, I want to kick this back over to you. So, um, you know, with, with this product, with fan love beauty, you have that business. You also have the consulting business, but you're also a, a speaker, um, a keynote speaker. I'm kind of curious, like what what type of um, venues have you come in? Is it usually cosmetic related or do you typically go it's out for usual, like business related? It's usually cosmetic related, but I've done over 30 podcasts. It's more business related. And when it comes to business, doesn't matter what kind of business, the fundamentals of business, they are the same. And I'm also, uh, I'm a 10 uh, stage agency mentee also with P Vargas. Yep. So I do want to become an even more powerful uh, speaker. Be I'm already a speaker, but I want to be more powerful just because I build my brand for the love of a speaker. Mm -hmm. Now I want, you know, even my package is a, a, has a speaker on it. The lip balm package has a spe uh, speaker. Mm -hmm. I want to walk the talk be a powerful speaker myself to inspire people. Absolutely. I actually just signed up for uh, the Pete Vargas uh, stages program. I've gone through a little bit of the virtual stuff, but I'm actually supposed to go to like one of the events, uh, you know, being, having a podcast that definitely inspired this, like, Hey, you know what? I'd like to get booked on more podcasts. And I'd also like to, um, you know, maybe find myself on stages. I'll crawl before I walk, before I get up on a stage. But I, I, Obviously, I'm a big believer of podcasts. I think they're a powerful marketing tool. I think for me, I love that I'm able to interview people that just inspire me. And, you know, being a love of personal development in general, which is why, you know, a slew of books all around me. I'm always listening to something audio. I just, I, I love that. I love, you know, filling the cup with something positive. But, you know, it, for me, being able to interview those people like yourself, it adds value to me. I feel like it really adds value to um, the audience, the people that listen to the show or watch the show. But I really love the fact that it is a vehicle that helps me market maybe a little bit of what I do, and it helps me attract more businesses that I can help. And it's it's cool. You know, I, I, I didn't start the show with any of those intentions. It was just like, you know what, I really want to... Um, just get out there. I want to, you know, go this approach. I'd love to be able to interview people that inspire me and let them connect with the audience so they can inspire them as well. Um, so typically in, in most of the podcasts you're on, you're usually more so on the, on the business end of things, being in a space that is highly competitive. I'm kind of curious, what are some of the things that um, that you hold on to that seem to be tried and true that help you combat going up against maybe some larger brands that are out there. I would imagine fan love beauty goes against chapstick. You know, that's, that's a big brand. You know, what have you found to be like, uh, maybe it's competitive edge or, you know, just business philosophies that have helped you compete in those spaces. It's the connection. I do a lot of pop-ups. I do a lot of events uh -huh. and when you do events, you connect with people. And the bigger companies, they just don't do events as much. They just, you know, pour money into advertisement. Advertisement, sometimes it's very hard to measure the ROI. But when you do events, you not only get getting followers, you're getting sales and you get a loyal family to support you. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think anytime you have an opportunity to connect with an audience or connect with a, a group of people, it definitely makes for uh, an easier way to do business with them. At the end of the day, people want to do business with people that they like, um, you know, more often than not uh, in, in the marketing side of me, I'll talk to business owners about, look, really, we want to try to not brand the company, but if we can really get somebody as like the face of this thing, because people want to have that personal connection, you know, that's the better way to go because if they can connect with that business owner, 
on on a more personal level or see that behind the the service that they do or the product that they have that there's this real person that that has a family and they're likable and all those those benefits uh, factors about that person that will help them connect and they want to do business with you mm-hmm. yeah so um i'm curious for individuals that maybe want to bring a product to market what is kind of like that onboarding process if they you know they they see this podcast and they're thinking you know what i've had an idea for a product that i would really like to start um you know what what's like that onboarding process and what are some of the things they should consider before even reaching out okay uh if you this is something i actually will cover in my consulting call yeah i will want you to have your business website secured and when you secure your business website secure all of the social media Mm -hmm. the reason why i'm saying this is because i have a customer a potential customer who came and i asked what's your website and he told me it's something that that shop i was like how come you didn't do dot com and he said, well, because somebody else have dot com. So I went to check what's, who's the somebody else. It's also a beauty brand. I was like, what are you doing? You're putting money on the table. Because, you know, when you tell people your brand name, the first thing people go for the dot com. Oh, and yeah. so, yeah. So the first thing is, and he has all his social done already. You know, he's been like doing social before he has product, before he has anything. Right. So I sent him back to the drawing board. It's just a fundamental as that. And also it's like securing your social media is very important. For example, when I launched Fenlaw Beauty, I have every single handle secure except Instagram. So for the longest time, I've been using official Fenlaw Beauty as my Instagram page. However, mm-hmm. I trademarked my company name. And because now I have the trademark, I went to Instagram. I said, hey, I have the intellectual property. So Instagram awarded me Fan Love Beauty and kicked the other person off. So oh, all wow. of my social media are consistent now. So see, this is not even like anything beauty related, but it's the fundamental of the business that you have to have your foundation right. Very cool. So, you know, I actually have that same issue with um, one platform in trying to recover my name and Based on this, I'm going to talk to my attorney about going through the trademark process so I can then submit the claim to make sure that I still get the handle for uh, one of those platforms. Mm-hmm. Very cool. All right. So um, so once somebody has an idea, you're saying, you know, I, I would venture to guess that looking to see if you can find that brand, if you can find the dot com of it, which I, oh, I'm a big I- advocate for. Sure. Or you can, if you have a name that you want, go ahead, do that. And if you can secure all of them, go ahead, do that. Or it's a part of my consulting package that I can help you. I can think of the brand names for you and I can help you to secure. I can look if the e-commerce site, e-commerce site is available or not. I can also do that for you. So actually in order to work with me, the earlier to start, the better, because yeah. You know, like the other guy, yes, he has his website done, but it wasn't the dot com. Then what's the point? Right. So the earlier you check in, the better it is. And some pe- sometimes people's like, oh, I, I'm not sure. I don't want to invest the money yet. The thing is, come me first, right? Then the mm-hmm. rest will follow. Absolutely. If you know you want to do something, just commit to it. Yeah. And and I would imagine you help them not only just be able to come up with maybe better branding or what the branding would be, how to get things in order as far as social, um, the website, things like that. But do you, um, I would imagine you also help them with maybe what the actual chemical makeup would yes, be. Yes, that's part of the thing that I do too. So I will help them to see what kind of product they should be making. And also by looking at the competitive landscaping to see what are the white spaces and what kind of, um, how can you dominate, you know, so you, so you don't compete with them, you dominate the so, the niche. And then uh, you also need to think about the, your top of funnel also. You can, it's, it's kind of like a two way you do it. It's you either go very niche or you go very broad. 
for 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 Devon Zhang, he would want to go narrow and deep. Okay, for Grant Cardone, he want the top of the funnel thing because the more people he can get in, <laughs> the more opportunities. Absolutely. So sometimes having two different mentors, you can see different perspectives. That's very true. Yeah, you know, in the finance world, you can listen to Grant or Dave Ramsey. You're going to get a whole different slice of the pie. Uh, not to say that one is better than the other. Uh, maybe it's just which way you want to go with it. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm curious, over the last 30 years, I'm kind of curious uh, roughly how many different brands or products you've worked with. Maybe 300. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, that definitely says you've got the experience to be able to help go from an idea to concept to, you know, full on product launch. It's very cool. Yep. So if somebody is interested in reaching out to you for just that, let's say they've had this idea of a product that they've wanted to bring to market for, for the longest time, they just didn't know how to go about it. What would be the best way for them to try to reach out, connect with you and you know, uh, it, it, and do you do like a free initial consultation just to kind of get okay. the ball rolling? I don't, I don't do a free initial consultation. I used to do it. And then I realized you don't pay, you don't pay attention. Remember that's what that's Greg 100% the case. Said. So what I do is you do need to pay a nominal fee for the mm -hmm. first call, but the call, the fee can be credit back when you are ready to work with me. Yep. So it's not the total wash on my time. And it's not giving you, uh, you know, information because there are a lot of freeloaders out there. It's just like, I cannot, I cannot help everyone. I would love to help everyone, but you need to show some commitment. Yeah. You know, and to that, and, and I think where, 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 where money goes, commitment goes as well. You know, when, when you're committed to it and you put money into it, you're, you're just that much further ahead. Um, it stands it, it, the amount of times that I've had like sign up for this free training or something like that. And then it's like, when it comes time to it, it's like, yeah, you know what? Um, you know, I'm going to go watch the game instead. I'm going to decide not to do that free thing. It's because we don't value things that we don't put money to. Um, so I'm right there with you. I definitely right. think that, uh, making that first initial commitment is worth it because it's the commitment that you make to yourself and to that individual, and you've backed it up with money. Equally, I would imagine that the type of information that they're going to learn just in that consultation with you will probably have them way further ahead than they would have been just trying to wing it through YouTube videos and tutorials and online searches and all that jazz. So, um, and Absolutely. if they- I mean, just like the information I was just sharing with you, how I got my Instagram handle, that's something I don't think any but it's going to tell you easily. <laughs> no. Yeah. You know, I, by, by chance, you just happened to help me with a problem that I'm having. I didn't really know the solution. I haven't invested the time to really look into it either, but you know, it was good for me to be able to know, okay, well, if I do have, you know, this is how I can fix that problem. So if, if somebody is interested in reaching out, where exactly would they go to connect with you on the consulting side? Well, actually, the easiest way to connect with me is follow me my, on my Instagram. And there is, uh, you can find my email on Instagram and we can go from there. My Instagram uh, for the for consulting side and also slash personal, because I show a lot of personal stuff there too, is uh, the beauty shark ginger. The beauty shark ginger. I love that. Very cool. So Ginger, as we, we start to wrap up this episode, I always like to uh, give each guest an opportunity to maybe share something in case I missed something in any of my questions. If there's anything you'd like to share with the audience uh, as we start to round to the end of the episode, um, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to just roll from there. Um, well, the lip care is very important because our lips have no oil gland or sweat gland. So they do need tender loving care and drinking water alone will not hydrate your lips and the chicken grease from your food will not be grease your lips. You do need <laughs> a nice lip balm. And uh, when you purchase Fenla Beauty Lip Balm, I actually donate uh, 1% of the proceeds to Suicide Prevention Foundation because Fenla Beauty is built for entrepreneurs by entrepreneur. I believe entrepreneurs is a backbone of the economy and entrepreneurial journey is also very lonely. It's very easy to go down the suicide road. And September is Preve Suicide Prevention Month. 
So I just kind of want to bring the awareness and uh, I have already donated for this month already, but I just want to encourage people. If you want something good for your lips and also help to save other people's life, why don't you get the life-saving lip balm? Absolutely. I, I love that. I love uh, any company that has a product, but also has a mission behind that product. I feel like that, you know, it, it, it's the why of their company. It's the core of why they do what they do. And I want to piggyback on what you said. I, I absolutely believe business owners, local to mid-sized companies, entrepreneurs, 100%, definitely the backbone of the economy. And on, on a national scale, but also it's just a beautiful thing inside of local communities. I feel like the local to mid-sized company, they're the ones that, you know, they fund the the little league. You know, they, you know, they make donations to the local organizations. They're the ones that employ uh, you know, large groups of people so that everybody in the neighborhood has has a job or a, a way of being able to create income. I just, they really drive it. I, I just wanted to kind of close out with that. But Ginger, I appreciate you taking some time to be able to come in and, and share with us, uh, you know, the, the value of having a mentor, uh, the value committing first, uh, the, the, the stuff that you have within your product base and within your uh, consulting side. And um, I, I hope that in the future, as you start to develop more products, maybe we can have you back and, and we can roll from there. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. You've been listening to the Lava Hot Podcast with Joseph Connell Jr. Do you want to level up your business in 2022? Then visit us at golavahot.com for a free marketing analysis. Show me.